very good day to everyone. So as uh, the previous speaker was saying, that some of the difficulty with this uh, online teaching is that we don't actually get to see the students face to face. Um, as I was telling my students in my, in my classrooms, uh, I did not become a, a, a lecturer or a teacher to be seeing uh, boxes of names uh, and, and talking to boxes of names. So I, I like to see faces, I like to interact. I like, and, uh, and one of the feedbacks that we get when we teach is actually being able to see the, the, the students. Uh, they say, oh, oh, now I understand. Or they look very confused and they don't understand. That, that, those are cues that allow us to actually uh, know whether to go faster or slower or to repeat what we just said. So I'm losing all those cues. Uh, so if there are any questions, I do just uh, post them up. And then uh, later on, we will cover any questions that you may have. So uh, I'm going to talk about the post-pandemic digital future. My background is on computing. And uh, as we have all of us, we have been observing the, the things that's happening around us. Uh, and I just want to share with you uh, one uh, slide. So, oops. Go on, uh. so if you look at the, this uh, slide, Ah, so if you look at this one, you see that on the left, you have the Zoom stock market. And you see that uh, it was a low, 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 low. Then it went high uh, around uh, March, uh, February, March uh, time. And you see on the right, you have the oil, okay, Brent crude oil prices. I just took that uh, yesterday. So you can see a huge crash. So it is quite interesting to see that, uh, again, you, you, you consider these two, two thoughts. One is... Uh, uh, modern technology, in a sense, uh, where you have uh, video conferencing tools. Uh, again, this is just an example. Uh -huh. I'm not promoting Zoom. Uh, and on the other side, you have uh, oil, which is, again, a staple uh, part of everyday life that we, we definitely need. And the question I have is not so much, uh, I mean, this the oil will go up, all right? So it will not stay at zero or negative for forever. It's definitely going up. The question I have is, uh, what is the future? Because if you know what's the future uh, after post-pandemic, what's going to be happening, uh, then, then you can make plans for it, isn't it? I mean, as a student or as parents, if you know that, uh, let's say, three years or five years, uh, what will uh, oil prices or, or high-tech industries or, or whatever industry that you're going into, if you have an idea of uh, what is, where is it going to be, then you, have an, uh, you may be able to take advantage of it now, all right? So when we talk, talk about, uh, about the future uh, post-pandemic, there are so many things we can talk about, all right? But let's talk about uh, one thing, which is communication, because uh, that's what we're doing here. Uh, last time, I mean, to, in order to do this uh, video conferencing, you would need a lot of, uh, a lot of tools, you know. You need a, a video camera, you need a, a broadcasting system, you need all sorts of stuff, all very expensive, a lot of uh, technicians, everybody around. But now, I mean, I'm doing this thing with uh, you guys and then it's all from the comfort of home. So it's quite amazing. And if you really think about it, right, in the previous uh, uh, generation, if we talk about it, I mean, you have the message. When people, uh, last time I talked about a message, they might be asking, do you mean a telegraph? Okay, so some people don't know what's a telegraph already. And then mail, we still do get mail. Uh, and also call, phone calls, you know, on the phone. So those are ways that we communicate, and those things have actually uh, changed a bit. So you have the uh, message, now obviously it means WhatsApp, and you have email, and you have uh, things that they call video call. So um, this is just the communication medium, you see. And the communication medium changes, and, uh, and, and what happens is that let's talk about security. Now, in the olden days, uh, if you talk about uh, mail, okay, if you want to secure your mail, uh, the king, if he wants to send a confidential, uh, secret, uh, uh, confidential uh, mail to somebody else, he would actually seal it. So you press upon the seal, and then when you receive it, you would break the wax, okay, you break the wax, and then if the wax is broken, you know that nobody has read that mail before. Uh, then you have people who would try to counterfeit. So they will try to fake the seal. So they'll fake the seal. And then so you need to figure out, okay, how do you uh, authenticate whether this is actually from the king or from a villain? All right. So you have those type of cases. And uh, so those are security issues even from the olden days. And call uh, is funny, but last time there used to be uh, hackers where they'll call. How they will hack is basically just trying to uh, uh, bluff or hack the, the public phone so they can actually call internationally. So they press a series of numbers and then they just cheat the system so that they can call, uh, make international calls for free. So again, it's, uh, 
security systems in even those uh, old mediums, uh, those uh, traditional mediums, uh, are still an issue. So uh, that thing also happens for modern systems, the email. Again, most of us are comfortable with email. We don't click on links that we don't know who it belongs to. Uh, a lot of times you have those uh, funny links, that uh, funny emails that come from uh, people asking for money or asking for your, your username and password for your bank accounts. So again, those are security things. And, and there was a period of time where people were not familiar. So, but then at the end, you have a user education. People start getting familiar with all these things. And then now it seems uh, uh, people are, are comfortable. Now you're going into, again, a newish. I wouldn't say it's new. Video conferencing is not something new. But it's newish for the general population. Uh, previously, most people would not do business. Uh, again, general population, uh, or at least uh, even online learning. So online learning, again, uh, was there. But now it's taken on a more, uh, again, because of COVID-19. So it's taken on a more massive appeal. And, um, and I would tell, I would predict this, okay? I'm not a prophet. But if I was to predict something, I would say that, after COVID-19, you see a lot of people are comfortable doing uh, video calls and uh, they would be comfortable even just uh, presenting from, uh, again, from Sarawak to, to West Malaysia uh, without flying over. Okay, So there will be people who will be very comfortable doing this uh, more so than before. I, for one, uh, will be comfortable just uh, talking to my students uh, for consultation, just to do a video call and then we can share screen, which is what we've been doing so far. So they'll show me their code and uh, I'll assess them uh, and then I'll ask questions, and then I'll just work on it with them. So this is going to be a new normal, all right? This is going to be a new normal for many of us. We may not use it 100% pure like now, but we will definitely embed it into our everyday life. And so when you come into uh, security, um, it is an industry. So you have uh, developers, uh, again, all those uh, applications, all those uh, tools that you have. You have businesses, you have people who are detectives or, or specialists uh, finding out all these things. You have people who enforce it. And you also have uh, people like me, teachers, lecturers who are uh, in academics doing research or finding out more about security for this type of communication medium. And that comes into the idea of cybersecurity. So cybersecurity is, is a very wide area. So sometimes people don't realize that it's not just uh, uh, what you see on TV where people are hacking a server and, some, and things like that. It's also things that are, can be quite boring, uh, like your passwords. How do you uh, create a password that is uh, secure? Uh, you have authentication. How do I know that the email is coming from you? You have privacy issues. How do I know that uh, anybody is uh, uh, listening in, into our conversation? Uh, you have uh, all sorts of things in cybersecurity. You have uh, software, for example, how it's not just the uh, internet or communication. You also have how do you make sure that the software, the malware, the virus, all these things. Is, uh, so it's a very, very wide topic. So and, and within this topic, you also have specialists within cybersecurity. All right. So uh, and after this uh, COVID-19, you're going to see a boom. In fact, it was booming beforehand and it's going to boom now as the people uh, realize that as the transition, I mean, you've got people selling fish. I mean, fish, uh, 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 fishermen uh, and the fish retailers are selling fish through online. You have supermarkets are offering delivery. So, at this, uh, so as these transitions, uh, all these uh, traditional uh, mom and pop stores, uh, small, medium, and medium enterprises, as a transition into a new way of doing business, and uh, cybersecurity is going to be more and more, and more of, uh, of an issue. And again, uh, you will have people who will be able to assist in this. Like for example, uh, COVID-19, aren't you, aren't you so happy that we actually have frontliners or you have doctors who can give advice, nurses who can give you support? So in the same way, when Malaysia has a sufficient uh, cybersecurity specialists, so if there are any issues or any concerns about even just everyday things, our banking or our shops, our stores, and so on, then you again have this layer of specialists, cyber specialists and security people who are able to assist and bring up the nation. So cybersecurity is actually one of those uh, key factors, uh, key uh, uh, pillars uh, in uh, even the national economy and for Sarawak, the state economy. Cybersecurity is actually now state economy uh, blueprint as well. So that's just cybersecurity. And with all the excitement about cybersecurity, uh, there are other people who are actually very, very much part of it. Cybersecurity is very sexy, like, the name. Uh, but in terms of, uh, it's a very specialized course. You see, 
software engineering, uh, I mean, these are two uh, subjects that we offer. But again, it's a general, uh, this is a general seminar. So I explained to you, and it's true for uh, all courses around. Software engineering looks into uh, building uh, complex and sophisticated applications. So you don't really need a software engineer if you're only a one-man show, for example, uh, just to, to exaggerate the point. Uh, but then if you have, uh, again, 100 people uh, scattered through uh, three continents, uh, Europe, US, Asia, and you have to do uh, development, you need a way of, uh, of uh, developing software. So that's where software engineering comes in, giving you the tools, giving you the understanding, the concepts to deliver software on budget, on time, uh, on high quality, uh, with the with the resources that you have. So that's uh, software engineering. So we can see this in all the applications that we have. Like I said, small, medium enterprises, you need more development tools. I mean, just look at your app store. Your app store is developed by all sorts of uh, little, little companies, uh, small, medium enterprises. They can build their own apps. And uh, that is what, again, any graduate or anybody who who is uh, in software engineering should be able to do easily for you. For example, we have a unit called mobile application development. And from there, uh, we learn how to do all this. Uh, again, any of our graduates should be able to produce an app for you. Okay, So that's just an example. And this would be what we consider as basic skills. Okay, So it's not high tech. It is uh, basic skills that every graduate should be able to have. And that's, uh, again, very interesting, very exciting for, for a lot of people. Let's look at a case study. Lah. Um, have you received this? Because I think every Malaysian have, uh, maybe have received this. Uh, so I received this again uh, from from uh, people uh, from my church uh, groups, from my colleagues, and from all family and friends. And they say that dear all, if you install Zoom in your mobile phone and if you have CIMB in Maybank app, please delete the Zoom. Uh, Sis, who works in Bank Negara, received an email from the bank telling him that the IT department found out that Zoom has been used to hack into Maybank to you and. CIMB clicks. Lots of complaints lately on people's account getting hacked into. So let's use, use this one as a case. Lah. Again, we are saying that communication uh, evolves. Yeah? We are saying that uh, bad people, I'll just make it easier, bad people uh, have been there from the beginning until today, and they'll continue to be. And uh, sometimes uh, these uh, bad people, uh, they like to create panic. All right, that's where uh, fake news comes in. Fake news is like when we were young, uh, for the older guys, you have chain letters. So the whole point of it, just to make people scared, panic, and see a response. So that is uh, what these uh, mischievous uh, people do. So when we consider the, the, uh, the panic that is caused by this, uh, this uh, chat message, uh, again, consider it. Uh, why would, did the panic occur? Well, for many of us, it's because we are not familiar with what technology can or cannot do. So as you read it, you think that, yeah, it's, it's, maybe it's possible that the uh, Zoom can be used to hack into Maybank to you and CIMB clicks. And, um, and now I just want to say for now, because like, you made me uh, misunderstand me, I, I'm not supporting Zoom. I have no stock in Zoom. It's just that it's something that it's, uh, a lot of people are familiar with, all right? So, <laughs> so what happens is um, um, Zoom does have problems. Can I say that? Zoom does have problems, does have security flaws. Their CEO has admitted as such. But there's a difference between uh, the security flaws that the CEO mentioned and has been legitimately uh, verified and uh, found out by security specialists and the one that is listed over here. Okay, So it's a huge difference. It's the difference between saying that uh, your, your car, the, the, what do you call that thing, the, uh, the the system is uh, ABS is broken, and the difference is saying that, and you need to go bring your car to the shop to replace the ABS or the, the uh, airbag, okay? Uh, and saying that your car, if you start the engine, it will explode, all right? So there is too huge, the risk, risk assessment is very different. So for this one, right, uh, think about it, all right? Um, if this was true, if this was true, uh, then that means that uh, you don't have to do anything uh, from what the message seems to in indicate. Uh, um, you just install Zoom and then it can go into your Maybank account, let's say. How, how does that work? That means that uh, hackers have managed to use an app to access another app. Now, if that was true, why did they have to wait until Zoom? 
why don't they use uh, Instagram? You can then argue. Instagram got better security. They hire proper cyber specialists, cyber security specialists. That's why Instagram cannot. Okay, okay, maybe that's true. Uh, how about just making a game? Think about it. Lah. If you can just create a game where people just download and you can spend a million, two million to create a game, and then you can access, use that game to embed certain things, and then use that game to, again, uh, hack into CIMB, uh, Maybank to you, you can get millions and millions of dollars. Huh? Millions and millions of ringgit. So why not just create, the hackers just create their own game? And the reason why they cannot is because the operating system itself does not allow one app to actually access another app. That is actually what the operating system does. So if you study operating system, uh, or if you, uh, again, this is operating system is a, is a common unit for software engineering, computer science, uh, and cyber uh, security, you realize again that there is, you try to make sure that apps do not touch apps, that everything is in their own, own place, all right? So that's what operating system designers uh, try to do. Now, you could say that uh, maybe the operating system uh, designers, uh, there was a flaw. So there's a loophole. And it is possible. I'm not saying that these things are not possible. I'm saying that uh, if there is a flaw, it is not Zoom. It is an operating system problem. It means that your Android and your iOS has a, has a serious, serious vulnerability issue that allows one app developer to actually manipulate and access another app. And consider this, la. again, consider this. Okay, that's one point. The other point is that for Maybank and CIMB, right, security is probably the, the number one thing because money, right? If uh, any company, especially a bank, uh, you found out that the people can actually go into it and just take money out of your account, the next day, everybody will be drawing money out of it. So uh, cybersecurity is a very, and software engineering, it's a must-have. I mean, again, developing apps that are secure is one of the priorities. So think about it. For Just for you to go into a bank, you have to put in your username, you have to put in your password. That is going to show up with the, with the picture. This I'm talking about Maybank. So you have a picture, and then you have your pa uh, passphrase that, that to confirm that uh, you are actually in Maybank. And then they, uh, they do all sorts of loops. You have your uh, tag number, then you have your secure to you, all this stuff. Uh, security measures, you know, just, just to move money. And Zoom can now shortcut all of that. If it happened, then the hackers are really good. So um, that's why when we, when we consider these things, again, if you're in a computer science or technology field, then you, you think about it. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm not saying it's not possible. But what I'm saying that if it is possible, it is far more catastrophic than one app. It is talking about huge vulnerabilities at our bank, banker, and also at our OS. So it's two huge catas catas catastrophes, disasters. It's not just Zoom. Okay, so that's that's one consideration. And uh, so if you can think about this, uh, again, you have people, uh, a society lah. Again, thankfully we have uh, we have a country where we actually have specialists and who can give proper advice, and then the, the banks can lean on them. Otherwise, we'll all be panicking, okay? So again, that is where uh, we, uh, the country, uh, society, uh, needs uh, uh, this type of expertise in, in the field, okay? So that is just a one case study. I thought that was an interesting one. And these are things that we also consider when we are in classes, uh, real world events. I'm telling you, we have lots of case studies coming out of uh, these past few uh, weeks. Now. So uh, we have looked into communication medium, and let us uh, look into another thing, uh, another thing I want to explore which is uh, you have this transition uh, from the traditional media into the new media, but there is a digital divide. This is a sad but true. We have uh, many students who, are, again, are not in university because university, um, uh, for our side, uh, many students are able, they have their own laptop and they are able to connect online. But again, many students, we will also understand, appreciate, uh, are actually left behind. So they are behind in terms of email or video call. The infrastructure is not there to support them, the know-how, the technology. So there's a lot of issues over there. So what happens is uh, you can look at it uh, uh, one way, which is a negative side. And the other way is that you can also see it as an opportunity. So we are not saturated yet. So there's going to be plenty of opportunity for delivery of these uh, services, delivery of these products. 
uh, we, we will need more of these uh, technologies uh, localized for our Malaysian context. Again, because we have a gap. So every time you have a gap, uh, you will see that the market tries to meet that gap. And uh, we even see this in, in this uh, digital marketing as well, what we're doing today. So there's a gap and people rush in to fill the gap. So when it comes to digital divide, uh, we are not saturated. We are not fully 100% a digital, digital economy. So there will be a need for it uh, for some time. And uh, that is where, uh, again, after this, uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19, you will see uh, um, more demand for uh, this type of products and this type of services. And, and the government, and I believe uh, many industries will quicken, will speed up on the, on the transition or at least uh, investment into the infrastructure and so on. So it is a good thing uh, to have. And uh, that would just speed up what was a, a trend in the first place. Netflix was pushing a trend. So that's another topic. But Netflix and entertainment was a very significant uh, pusher for a bigger bandwidth, for all this uh, unify and so on. So that is one area. But in terms of uh, industry, education, uh, it would be another push, which we'll see uh, after this, uh, uh, this uh, pandemic has passed. Okay? It, will, it will not subside. And so that's an opportunity. Now, the last thing I want to say is talking about, uh, we have considered it as the communication medium. But you see, communication medium, uh, it is just a medium. The question is, what are you communicating? Because if you're communicating junk, uh, that doesn't really build society. Or if you're communicating fake news, you're creating a lot of panic, lost productivity. Uh, it doesn't help uh, society. So communication medium is by, by itself, uh, technology is a neutral thing. There is, it can be used for good, it can be used for bad. So when you go to uh, university, uh, this is what I tell uh, students and I also tell parents and tell a lot of uh, people, you really want to produce uh, uh, graduates who, who can communicate but, and can communicate well, but they have substance, all right? So when they talk, right, they can actually, uh, they are independent thinkers, they are uh, forward-looking, critical thinking, creative thinking, contributing to society. So you want that sort of a graduates. You don't just want somebody who is just a code monkey. So you ask him to do this, he do that, he asks him to do this. You want somebody who can be innovative and so on. And, and that is hard, okay? Because the universities invest a lot of, uh, again, from the, from the teacher's point of view, we try to... Uh, identify students and, and engage with them, exchange of thoughts, exchange of ideas. And this is where um, I, I, I enjoy my classes, okay? I enjoy talking to the students. And um, a lot of people think that the future of the world is maybe by uh, algorithms, okay? I'm a computer guy. So uh, better algorithms, better decision-making, being able to think about fake news, and, and, and you're hoping that Facebook can, can filter, YouTube and Facebook can filter out what is fake news and what is not. And uh, right now, I can tell you, lah, huh? don't put too much hope there. Lah. Um, like the way I described the Zoom part, um, you need a human being to do all those things. Even as we, as we uh, exalt or, or you know, think about AI, actually, we don't need artificial intelligence. We actually need more natural intelligence, human intelligence. We are sometimes uh, very lacking in that. Who is able to look at the data, think about things, and then be able to, again, in our own mind, uh -huh, be able to process and then make decisions and, and be able to... Uh, um, uh, produce uh, services, products, uh, visions for society. These are things that algorithms cannot do. All right? So we want graduates who can do that. And that's why I think that every graduate should be. It doesn't matter what uh, course you take. Uh, it can be accounting, can be nursing, can be whatever course that you take. But uh, not only are you able to communicate uh, through email and so on, but there should be substance so that uh, when we... When we Listen, uh, we know that you talk sense and you are clear and uh, you can lead, you can contribute. And uh, then an example of this uh, is uh, I was so happy. I got uh, one message I got was the, the uh, delete your Zoom 
uh, thing because it's going to uh, uh, Maybank uh, is hacked and so on. So that was one message I got. But this is another uh, message I got from my sister. So she sent me this and she said that, wow, all these people are doing a 3D printing and then they are uh, doing things for the frontliners. I think you guys know all these things. And my sister was asking, are those Curtin students? I said, yes. So uh, there's a feeling of being proud of them. I mean, these are not all Curtin students. Uh, they are a bunch of people, again, uh, close friends of Curtin. Uh, we have an NGO, uh, social enterprise, and all these people working together. And then I think it's the, it's the what we want to produce, a collaboration within society of technology, of, of social issues, of community outreach. So we are actually building a, a, a society, you see. And, and that is what we want. We want to produce graduates who are not just thinking about making money. Money is very important. I definitely agree. But we want to be able to do this type of thing so that as lecturers, I can tell you, I feel proud. I feel proud of my colleagues. They saw one of my colleagues over there, Dr. Garrett, and he has his students. And then they're working to, again, uh, help society, not make panic. So technology is neutral. There's going to be positive uh, actors. There's going to be negative actors, uh, white hats and black hat hackers, if you're interested. And uh, the university side is uh, where we try to develop people who can, who can do the things I said from a skill perspective, but also to bring uh, like-minded people, uh, the lecturers, parents, businesses, NGOs, governments, and so on, to make uh, tomorrow a better place. Okay. So that is uh, uh, what we have. And so for the post-pandemic digital future, um, there are going to be many changes, all right? Uh, some good, some bad. Technology will be pushed to the forefront. But I just want to caution everybody that uh, technology will not be the answer. Uh, a lot of times, technology is neutral. So you need people and uh, as we train them in the skill set, we also train them in the heart. All right. So that is the, I, I wish everybody uh, safe uh, and everybody will be uh, uh, contributing to society in your own ways. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Terence, for the sharing. Interesting that uh, you're taking all this life story, current story. I believe that your classes must be very interesting. You even brought up about the Zoom that people are worrying about all this SMS. You apply it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's all about education, eh? rather than rather than actually reading from the books, all those kind of things. Am I right? Parents? Oh, yes, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that should be the way of education is thinking of the current situations that whereby we are sharing with the students of what is happening around us. And, and the, you know, the last message, I hope that the students really hear that, that actually you are a technological person. You did your master in, in IT, am I right? In engineering. Yes. Yet yes. you are right. That technology is something that helping us, but then the heart, the people, I think personality, all these things, uh, the society is like, like what the students are doing. It's awesome. That's what is needed, isn't it? Yes. Correct. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, I don't, I don't see any questions. I'm not sure are any questions that uh, you want to ask the audience. Uh, sorry, uh, the speaker. You can ask here, then I can address it. But so far, there's no specific questions coming along uh, to you, uh, Terence. But uh, since there's... Uh, I understand you're coming on board tomorrow. Uh, then uh, perhaps, uh, since there's no questions, that allow me to ask a question specifically uh, about cutting, if you don't mind. I know you're a lecturer, isn't it? You're, you're teaching. Yeah. You're, you're teaching yeah. as well. And then you'll be <laughs> teaching and cutting. Yeah, and I don't think many people know that something interesting that I found from my colleague from Curtin, because our friends in Curtin, that told me that the classes in Curtin Miri actually are uh, actually run parallel with the one in Australia. Yes. Yes. Okay. So how, how do you do and you've been doing for years that we talk about online e-learning. This this has been happening for years that whereby a student can sit in the classes in Miri and then attending classes from Australia that you actually go live on there. I would like to share with us about all these things. Yeah, perhaps uh, for some students to know. Yeah. Um for uh cut in and I to be fair as well to many branch campuses, uh this yeah. is true, which is uh, a lot of the resources, a lot of videos are coming in from our mother campus. Okay. So for cut in, we get a lot of resources from Perth. And uh what is uh, wonderful is again uh students get to uh benefit from 
uh, uh, lectures uh, from, from Perth. And this is happening even before COVID-19. So they've been doing this for, well, since I came on board, actually. Uh, so uh, for 15 years, really. So when the COVID-19 happened, uh, the transition was not that painful for us, uh, to be honest. I mean, again, some students struggle because it's a pure. So it's a pure move rather than a hybrid move. So that yeah. was the pain. But then if you say that, okay, go online, go to Blackboard, uh, watch uh, eye lectures, uh, download the materials, submit the materials online, uh, ask questions in Moodle uh, or in uh, Blackboard. I mean, all these things uh, students actually know already. So that is uh, how we, we train the students. And um, uh, so for us, it's uh, undifferentiated and uh, sometimes it also goes the other way. So our colleagues over here can also uh, present things. So we have, for example, uh, for example, uh, for final year projects, uh, we had students who were presenting to our colleagues over there in Perth. So the Perth guys would actually uh, listen and they would give uh, feedback and comments. And uh, yeah, it's actually very nice. So uh, this sort of uh, what we're doing, this uh, video conferencing, we were actually doing, we have a special rooms in Inkatin uh, University, which uh, again, uh, many people were, were impressed by. So the camera can track you. Uh, and then you have multiple screens, and then there is a, a again a special console where uh, so you that directly go into the class. So for example, uh, our students can participate fully in their in their classes, and uh, and as if they are actually uh, inside the lecture that lecturer's class. So it's a very uh, it's a new world, uh, huh? And so Katin uh, was uh, was very nice. Uh, we're in the same time zone. So yeah. it's uh... <laughs> true, correct? Yeah, that's something that uh, is so much easier to do it, correct? Same time zone in Perth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so when I call them or I email them, I know that we don't have to fuss about uh, a different time zones. <laughs> then you have to plus yeah, yeah, my <laughs> right, right, So it, it's a pleasure. And uh, I think from a from an academic point of view, it's nice to be able to talk to colleagues over there. We do research with them over there, for example. Uh -huh. uh, so it's a very nice uh, uh, a uh, multinational uh, environment and it helps prepare the students. Okay, interesting. So that means that some classes are going on in Australia. You can enter a room in Curtin uh, Miri that whereby you're attending the same class that actually their student attending at Australia. Am I right? That's what they are trying to say. It's not all. So it's not all. Oh, yeah, it's not all. I know, I know. I've got some classes. Of course, you cannot be live yes. Then Your job is redundant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm saying it's another worry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, some of the classes we do do that, and uh, sometimes it's mostly for guest lectures and so on. Uh, but yes, we we do do that, and it's a uh, very nice. Mm. Ah, okay, all right. So, uh, uh, what uh, are your classes going on when the MCO was declared? Uh, the in curtain is it term break now? Can I know that last? Man, is it a term break? Uh, in, in your this state? week and last week was a term break. So yeah. this week and last week was term break. Before that, yeah. we had classes, and next ah. week we have classes ongoing. Oh, so and, class uh, students will come back online virtual classes next week already. Yeah, but okay. I mean, this morning I was having classes with students. So during mm -hmm. the tuition, uh, we call it tuition free week term break. So yeah. students uh, want to have feedback for their for their work. So I I you had a class with them. I went mm -hmm. through the work with them. They had questions. So on the same thing like what we're doing now. La. So they yeah, just yeah. post out the questions. Uh, so it's very nice, very convenient. Uh, I think everybody is adjusting. Of course, you prefer the the one on one uh, personal face to face uh, touch lah. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's not. I tell you, uh, if this happened 10, 20 years ago, I don't know what are you gonna do. <laughs> Exactly. That's why <laughs> you get the great point, Terence. When our time, what are you going to do? Uh, you gonna do? Stay at home. <laughs> Seriously, stay at home. And yeah. uh, students cannot learn. I mean, what are you going to do? Call your lecture one by one. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you cannot do anything. Yeah, so it's yeah. really nice. I mean, what we're having now, and again, it's uh, it's not to have this this facility we're talking about. Last time cost tens and thousands of dollars. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, right. I mean, you have a special conference room, right? A special video conference room. room. And then you have a, I had to invest so much. I had to make, pay monthly again. Uh, yeah. It's like, just switch on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, anytime, you, anytime, whatever time, you can actually talk to your lecturers now, isn't it? That, like what we're going through now. Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah, you are right. Exactly, yeah. But uh, I think we also must, as you say, that sometimes, uh, the other Maybe just discuss ourselves. There's sometimes if too much of things, all those things are some people that actually that find 
find it uh, some people who are in work uh, they, they, even they are work from home they find it quite stressful you know Terence I spoke to some of my friends uh, yes. oh I think this is the this is an, an issue that I think that yeah whereby they are yeah they have too many meetings to attend they, and then they meet too many. <laughs> this is also another social issue <laughs> yes there is serious uh, there are serious social issues there I also noticed that the divorces have uh, rise up because of this thing uh, <laughs> so it's that lah, huh? and also you have all those other social issues domestic violence uh, children and so at yeah. risk and so on so I mean these are again that's why I, I ended my talk I mean at the end of the day we're talking about developing a, a, a wholesome human beings lah, not yeah. just people who are stuck in their heads but again uh, answering your question uh, yes uh, this is all not uh, happy happy you're definitely right. I mean, there are pressures. I mean, I told my children just now, uh, yeah. uh, Papa is going to be doing this. Don't come into the room. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, Because, I, I mean, they are barging because this is the house, you see. I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, they are stressors. And uh, one problem, I think, with uh, technology is that it's always with you. Even before COVID-19, you have uh, bosses WhatsApping you, emailing you, uh, all these things while they're 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. And sometimes can't be helped. Uh, so I understand yeah. that. But True. if you make it like a uh, business as usual, uh, no separation between the home and yeah. the work and no separation between the weekday and the weekend. Uh, I mean, there is no weekend already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what's the weekend for the past six weeks already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's not right. Uh, I think, again, people are made to rest and I think mm-hmm. spend time with family. And I think also, I don't like, uh, again, these are all social issues with technology. People don't know how to talk to each other, look to each other in the eye. Um, and let's have a conversation without just looking at the phone. All these things are happening. Yeah. And uh, I think there will be, we need to create a better awareness or education or learning and start at home, start in schools. Uh, so, uh, so, technology this- is not going to yeah. be the, it's, it's not going to be the savior of, of humanity. La. There are some issues with it. Yeah, yeah, stereo <laughs> immunity, yeah, exactly. That's a post-pandemic, you know, after pandemic. Now we are already facing that. Just imagine that after pandemic, uh, then the yeah. bosses is so used to talk to you anytime, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I know. I, I think you're not mistaken, last time France had a law, a labor law. If you oh, email, yeah, they, they, uh, after you, you the email. Exactly. When you're on leave, friends have this law. When you're on leave, you do not need to read your email. And then even you're back, all your email, you can just ignore because you're not obliged to do that. But I don't think so. They're going to <laughs> impose this anymore. You're right. You're right. Exactly. Because they, they, they are very particular about the working hour and the family time, all those kind of things. You're right. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. But how do yeah, you yeah. apply it in the ancient context? I think it's, in, it cannot, it's very difficult. But uh, we, we, we try. Uh, I think happy workers are better workers. Uh, so. yeah, true, true. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Th- thanks for the sharing. I think there are a few. I think, uh, no question. Just the IV low. I'm not sure whether you have friends that are saying that. Yeah. They are bored at home. Yeah. Definitely. That's why we have to find things to do. <laughs> Correct. There are some comments here. People will go crazy. <laughs> yeah. This, I mean, exactly. <laughs> that we have been talking about. Some people will do, go crazy because if they are, they are too bored. I think some people actually have too much of. Works sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and then you are not meeting yeah. people. Correct, you are not meeting uh, your face to face. I think uh, it is a test of character, lah. Huh? Uh, yeah. I talk about technology, but it's a test of character when you are given a uh, time. What do you do with that time? Uh-huh. So, do you spend that time uh, reading a good book? A lot of times we talk about no time to read. Uh, yes, time to, read, time to read. So. Yeah. Uh, and and no time to spend with family. What mm-hmm. what's your excuse now? <laughs> <laughs> <It's like this. laughs> you are forced so, to with family. <laughs> so again, can uh, then some people are more productive. Again, we see some people learn to cook. Again, I, I think it's it's difficult to get out of bed, get out of the sofa, and so on. But I think uh, if you can think of uh, what's a hobby, just think of it as wow, I'm I'm given time to do things that uh, how do I want to spend the time doing? Uh, so I'm telling some people that uh, how will uh, how will the pandemic be after you get after this pandemic? How will you be? Would you be more wise? Would you be more uh, active? Would you be more uh, I don't know more invigorated? I mean, how would you be after the pandemic, or or would you just become fat at home again? That's why a lot of pictures been showing eating too much at home. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, I think fat instead of body, I think 
hopefully everybody will read more books like what yeah, do more yes, yes it's here, exactly correct enough yes. there's so much yes. resources so much of information online that they actually can gain isn't it correct yeah. correct especially <laughs> the young ones the young ones they're very easily distracted so a lot of games a lot of movies a lot of stuff and i'm really hoping that again those post spm and so on but it's quite hard lah. Uh, reading culture is very poor in malaysia this is a, a pet uh, comment of mine. I think more people should read lah. So that is uh, my my critical thought about uh, the young people. They don't read enough. Yeah, yeah. It's a. It's, you are right. Hopefully they can spend more time in reading other things. Yeah, there's so many material. They, they like the computer. I think in the iPad there are so many material, online material they can read as well. They can learn, and there are so many apps that actually help them to to do to learn whatever things that they want as well. Correct, parents. If the oh, like if you yeah. learn guitar, cooking, I mean, exactly. you're the best chefs teaching you how to cook. I mean, uh, sure. I mean, I bring my kids to, I'm hoping my kids will enjoy cooking. So I ask them to watch a Gordon Ramsay cooks. And then, uh, so they watch. So you can learn so many things, you know, from the best musicians, chefs, writers, directors, computer, uh, guy, everything you can learn. But what do you do? You watch uh, cats, uh, you watch uh, funny, whoever. Lah. I mean, I think fun is fun. Lah. But then... <laughs> question of how you use your time yeah yeah true that's good okay okay i think uh, it's almost four o'clock thanks for your sharing 